Philip Seymour Hoffman is here. As an actor who averages at least three films a year, he is unquestionably considered to be one of the busiest actors working. With a taste for extremes, he has built a career of dark characters. Here is a brief look at some of his signature roles. Did you, did you make this scarf yourself? No, George, I bought it. Yeah, because it's a beauty. Thank it you, really George. Is. In, in case I don't see you before the Thanksgiving holidays, why don't you give me one of your big hugs? Oh, George. Please? Good evening, Come boys. on. Nice oh. to meet you. Yeah, me too. Uh, are you going to be working, or? Um, maybe. Oh, probably. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Because how'd you meet Jack? Because I work on the film, you know, sometimes. So if you ever, yeah. They're not literally his children. They're the little Lebowski urban achievers, inner city children of promise, but without the necessary means for a necessary means for a higher education. So Mr. Lebowski is committed to sending all of them to college. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I've been told before, so don't tell me it's not true, because it's a fact. I bore people. People look at me and they get bored. People listen to me and they zone out bored. Who is that boring person, they think? I've never before met anyone so boring. You say I'm a prick? You say I'm a prick? You know, maybe I am. But you ask the average person when death comes knocking at their door whether they want a prick on their side or some kindergarten teacher who's going to kiss their ass. Well, I don't like the term drag queen, you know, because most drag queens just want to, you know, parade around looking flawless, you know, and if they sing, you know, they you know, lip sync to records. And, um, I'm a singer, um, and I'm a female impressionist. I'm an artist, you know? Do not leave me hanging on this. All right, please. I'm just, you know? Do not leave me hanging on this. All right, please. I'm just, Please. The see. <laughs> see, this is the, the scene of the movie where you help me out. Oh, God, don't you want to f every woman you see just once? Only once? Absolutely once, child. Give me the guess who. Come on, they got the courage to be drunken buffoons, which makes them poetic. Uh, give me some white light, white heat. Iggy Pop! Amen! Oh, I just put this on. This isn't on your playlist no, either. I just think it's a little bit early for that. Not for me. No, no. Shut up! Shut up! Shut, 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 shut up! Are you threatening me? Yes. That wasn't good! You're dead! Philip Seymour Hoffman currently has two new films, Love, Liza, and 25th Hour. I am pleased to have him back at this table. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Uh, when you look at that, 25th hour, I am pleased to have him back at this table. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Uh, when you look at that, <laughs> I mean, these are all, you look at each of those people, and I have two thoughts. First is these are, you make these characters interesting and mm -hmm. they come alive. That's talent. Secondly, you made a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, I was just looking at that, I was like, I'm getting tired. <laughs> just just at seeing it. what you've yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I I have to say, I think it has to do is that I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate because I've been offered and uh, given the opportunity to work on some great projects yeah. uh, with great people. And uh, I'm at a, I think any time in someone's life, but I'm definitely at a time in my life, and I have been at a time in my life where I, I've been available and could afford the time to do these yeah. things and give my whole heart to them. So that's really why, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, not because I need to be doing a movie every other week, but it's because I've had the opportunity to work with these people, and so I've jumped at it. I know, it's the same feeling in a different way, um, in a different ball game. You'll be tired, I'll be tired. I'll be, right. you know, I've done as much as I need to do, and mm -hmm. someone will come along and say, how would you like to interview? That's right. <laughs> you can't resist, because right. there's such an interesting story there That's right. that you want to talk to. That's right. And you don't care. It's, it's a ninth interview of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just saying... That's, that, that's what you do. That is exactly... It's, it's what I do, but it's also... I was just saying, you know, I think, like, well, maybe I won't make a movie for about a year. I think, like, that's... Yeah. Maybe I'll take a year, I'll do a play... Da, da, da. And But then I go, don't say that to anybody, because, you know, because something like that could happen. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. yeah. I want to talk about this movie, too, but the notion of a character actor... Right. Do you, do you say, I'm a character actor, I'm proudly so, or do you say, 
I don't know what that means because I'm an actor and right. I'll take a big role, a leading role, a small role. I'll just take a role. Right. I, I, I think that, you know, I never I never saw it as a... And I hope... It's so when you talk about this, you hope you don't sound pretentious. But yeah. the fact is that I never saw it as labeled as anything. Right. I just came into it because I wanted to act in the theater. And so I ended up in a college and I was studying it with some teachers and I was kind of formally... Making up what I would uh, use to create what I wanted to do, and with these teachers, and and that's what I did. And what I learned was that these people that I was going to play were not me, and that that's the first the thing I had to look at was how were they similar to me and how were they different from me, and I had to cover those bases so I could understand what makes them different and what makes them similar, and therefore I could create this person that's not living my life, it's living someone else's life. So I could understand what makes them different and what makes them similar, and therefore I could create this person that's not living my life, it's living someone else's life. And so that's just how I've approached it, and I guess that maybe people call that character acting, but that's just how I approach acting, period. Just acting. Yeah. yeah. Your br tell me about your brother, who wrote the screenplay mm -hmm. for Love Lies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, well, my brother, he's... Uh, He's always been the brightest person I've known, and he's always been someone I've um, been a bit intimidated by. He's always been someone I've looked up to, and he's always been the most creative person I've known. His mind doesn't work like other people. I've always felt that way and still do. And this film that he wrote, Love Liza, is yeah. a great testament to, to that. How he decided to tell a story about a, a grieving man yeah. is not unlike any other I've seen, and why, again, I wanted to do it, you know. So, yeah, he's, he's fantastic. You tell the story that when you go home, I mean, you're now the famous actor. Yeah, yeah. You go home and people say, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went, I went, home, uh, I went home and spoke at my. Uh, <laughs> My mom, two years ago, ran for family court judge in my hometown, and I, and I went home to help her campaign, and, and we were at, we went to my high school, you know, as you do when you campaign, and so we talked to my high school, me and my mother, yeah. and all, it was like a bunch of the teachers were like, where's Gordy? <laughs> yeah, where's Gordy? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, yeah, how about me? I'm you know, Gordy's a real talent. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it's, uh, people don't forget, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, tell me about this, Love, Liza. Love, Liza is basically a, a simple film. It, it's, it's a very complicated what happens to him, but it's a very simple film about the six weeks in a man's life after his wife has committed suicide. Uh, what he finds a uh, suicide note, a uh, letter left by his wife in the beginning of the film uh, that uh, becomes kind of his journey. He has a journey, a very odd journey, a very colorful journey, a funny journey, uh, lots of things journey, heading toward the reading, ultimately, of this letter. And, um, and that's the story my brother wrote. Okay. This is a story where you, playing Wilson, find the letter that the wife left before she right. killed herself. Here it is. Early enough. God. You don't want to sleep in my house? I want to sleep in my house. <sighs> Wrote me a note. Me a note. 
daughter wrote me a note. No. Then then why won't he open the note? Well, you know, it's it's I have my own reasons for why I won't open the note, and I think my one of the great things about the screenplay is that it leaves itself open on many levels for people to really come up to their own conclusion. <laughs> my, I think his reason, the main reason, I think you know he doesn't, he's a little scared about what it might say, but I think the biggest reason is the last time he'll hear from her. Uh, that the minute he reads that letter, there will be no more connection with her on this earth, right. you know, and uh, so I think it's really his fear of saying goodbye. Uh, more than anything, uh, even though everything has his confusion and his frustration and all that, but his fear of that, the minute he reads that, he's saying goodbye to her. So. Now, what did, did you talk to Gordy about this and say, what's going on here? I did, and he kind of answered the way I just did. I think he has his opinions, but I think he was really, I mean, as much as we're both a little bit of control freaks, so we, wanted to, we don't want to basically tell people what we think all the time, but I think he was trying very hard to hold back and let, let me come up with what I needed to come up with. Did he write this with you in mind? No. He just wrote it. It was his first screenplay. He was living in Chicago. He was writing plays that he put up by himself. He was driving a cab. And uh, he decided he wanted to live in L.A. And I uh, thought he had a better shot at things out there. And so he said, well, I better write some screenplays. I'm going to L.A. So he, this is his first screenplay. And he had me read it. Mm -hmm. and, and was it hard for you as a role? Yeah. Because yeah. Satisfying, though. Incredibly satisfying. Because the 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 story so full there's there's no gaps in its kind of human logic uh, that's the best way to put it, it it's heart it, there's no gaps so like every day even though it's a difficult task to take on it was worthy even though it's a difficult task to take on it was worthy you know yeah. so you wanted to you know so and and you're dealing with grief which is a motion everybody everybody knows about grief knows about. Yeah. yeah here's the next scene this is where you suffer a breakdown at this remote control speedboat race. Here it is, roll tape. Hey! There's no swimming today! I saw swimming! They had to go too! We can't have swimmers when we hold the race! Stay away! We can't have you in the water! I'm, I'm a great swimmer! I'll stay out of the way! I won't bother the race! You can swim later! You know who I am? I am a big fan of radio control! I got a plane in my car! And on this bed that lie in the night His wound is bleeding day and night I is made hey, 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 hey. What are you doing here? Not jumping in the lake, pissing people off! <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave. You have to leave. Oh, no, he's all right. This is great. Are they together? <laughs> this woman made me eggs? Uh -huh. Hey, Lewis, call the cops and get him out of here. No, no, he's sick. He's okay. He's with me. No, no, I'm great. You can't just do anything you want. That we have insurance rules we have to abide by. And when they aren't... Listen, listen, this guy's wife just died, okay? She blew her head off, okay? Now, we'll be cool, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's gas sniffing. Yes. What's that about? <laughs> well, you know, it's, again, I think... Uh, th one of the reasons why I couldn't put it down when I was reading it, and and I know everyone's hearing me. I'm talking about my brother's screenplay, and what he has to say these things. I'm telling you, no, I don't. I read so many you. screenplays, and uh, and this screenplay I, I read right through. It's really like it was just one of the most effortless reads, and one of the reasons was the st storyline of the gas sniffing because. He uses all this stuff that was metaphorical, and I don't even think he was trying to be metaphorical. Basically, about his this guy's recess into adolescence, because th that's where comfort might be found. And sniffing gas is a very kind of adolescent kid thing to do. Yeah, it it right. smells good, and he runs into these kids who do it, and that's where he gets the idea. So he tries it, and he gets high off it, and then that's how it goes. And, and the, but movies like that, his kind of haphazard attempts at trying to find freedom from the grief he's feeling, you know. And how does he become obsessed with model airplanes? 
Well, because he has to lie about the gas, oh, because yeah, he keeps right. running into people who basically say, Where's, do, you smell, Where's do, you, do you smell gas and he, at work, at his house? Yeah. And so he comes up with this lie, and he gets caught in it. He gets caught in the lie that he has these remote control airplanes, mm -hmm. and so he has to go buy one and, you know. How do you, do you look, what do you look for when, in, in terms of getting inside the character, not in terms of accepting a role, but look, getting inside the character? What is it that... Um, I, oh, you know what, I, you know, I look for the thing I really don't want to find. Uh, is the best, meaning that I keep, I keep asking questions about the character and about myself, back and forth, um, pertaining to the story, pertaining to what I know, to get at some type of truth that I feel uh, is the center of the guy, is the person's engine. Uh, if that makes any sense no, at all, you know, it, it's kind of like getting at something that hopefully will be. Um, something that kind of catapults whoever you're playing into action and that's a hard thing to do and sometimes you don't find it but do you, you can in constant search of it. Do you took, put the process on paper or is it just a mental exercise? It's a mental exercise. It's a mo no, it's very mental. It's, yeah. it's, it's work. It's, it's uh, problem solving. It's, it's a lot of things. And how much, how mu on this particular film, how much influence did you have on the casting? You know what? Uh, I really left it up to Todd DeWiseau, the director, right. who was an old friend of mine, who I did Son of a Woman with, actually, with the first clip there, right. uh, Son of a Woman, and Todd, Todd's in that movie, actually, I'm yelling at his character, and uh, he directed it, I really left it, and he cast this film brilliantly. I and mean, but did you recommend he come in himself? I did recommend Todd to come yeah. in. I, the, the, some of the producers and the, the director was my uh, recommendations, and they stayed on and they ended up doing the film. Uh, but Todd really casts this, this, this one, and Jack Kaler, who plays uh, Denny, is somebody that uh, we saw in an audition Todd wanted, and I also fought for it, too. He's fantastic. The other film is 25th Hour. Yeah, yeah. This is you, Spike Lee's film. Yeah. Ed Horton. Yeah. It's Ed another Norton. one. I, yeah, another one I couldn't... I couldn't really, couldn't turn it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because... Because it's um, <laughs> it's Spike Lee, you know, you know, you're gonna, ah, it's Spike Lee. Yeah, it's Spike Lee. I mean, the script's fantastic. It was, it was, I read the script and I knew it was from Spike, but I, I but I, I, and I, I, I was crying at the end of the script. I thought it was very moving and wonderful, and I liked the character. And so I met with him, and then it's I'm sitting next to Spike Lee, and so I was like, you know, he's like, so why don't you do this movie? Why don't you? Like, no, no, Spike, I don't want to do. And then what, like, he, he said, why don't you do the movie? Or yeah, he's like, let's do this movie. Let's let's do this puppy. Whatever yeah. he said, you know. Right. And, I, and I was like, uh, yeah, of okay. course, yeah. And how is he as a director? You know what? It was one of the most. Like I said, this past, like you just said, this past couple years has been busy, and uh, so I was kind of tired when I went into this movie. I was a little tired, a little distracted, and. And I went in thinking, like, oh, no, I hope, you know, it's Spike Lee. I want to do the best I can. And it was effortless. I mean, I was still tired and stuff, but the way he shoots, the way he deals with the set, the way he helms the ship of his movies really made me just go, oh, good. Somebody knows what they're it, doing. It makes it easy for you. Absolutely. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. He's setting it up so I can do the work I can do and being, you know, he's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, it's an old saying, but that, that the best and the most professional people appreciate nothing more than working with people who know what they're doing. Absolutely. And just none of this, don't crap around. Absolutely. You know, and you yeah. just make it easy yeah. and fun and everything else. Don't beat around the bush. Yeah, exactly. Please don't. There's not enough Let's time. Let's be with people yeah. and know what the hell they're Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And how is Ed on this? Oh, that was great. I, I just did uh, Red Dragon with him. Uh, again, yeah, this goes back to the great, the grateful right. thing, I really have to say, because I just did, and we didn't hang out much on, on Red Dragon, and but I got to talk with him a couple times, and then, you know, I got offered this film and Ed was going to do it, and... And I got in there, and we got to hang out more. And we have, you know, we talk about theater together, and talk about. And he really wants to talk about stuff a lot. And he's very intelligent, and, right. and I knew he's also somebody who's going to show up prepared. You know, he's going to show up and he's going to do his work, and and he's professional. And uh, and now, you know, we've gotten to know each other better, so we have some laughs, and that's always a positive. Thing. Someone said this is Spike's most mainstream film. Whatever that you means. You know what? I didn't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Someone always wants to say something about a Spike Lee movie. Yeah, yeah you know, you know what I mean. Oh, though yeah. it's like, and I, and they, because he's Spike Lee, and it's like, no, I don't think this is one of his most mainstream. I don't think he makes mainstream films, and I don't think he really ever has. In my, in my view, I think this is just another, another different film. This is another. I think he makes films that are of the present or of the now, uh, or speaking about us now. Right. You know, and right. this film is is. You'll know from the opening frame that he, he, he wants to talk about now in this city, in this country, in these people. And, uh, now, what's the idea? Know. 
the idea of the story. Yeah. The idea of the story is that uh, Edward Norton plays uh, this this drug dealer who's now going to go to prison for seven years, and he. It's the, basically the day before he does. This is a simple premise, but the movie is not about this at all, really. It's about a lot of other things. And so he asked myself and Barry Pepper's character to join him on his last evening, um, basically to help him in one some way, but ultimately we all help each other in ways that you don't really see coming. And it's it's very uh, very complex, human, great, colorful story. Right. Here is a scene in... in, in